Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is December 17th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. Check out our clash in air masses. That's what brought us our major windstorm across the Pacific Northwest. Much warmer, moist air to the south, much colder air coming across the Gulf of Alaska. They meet as what's known as a frontal system, mid-latitude cyclone, potent pressure gradients, and you saw the result of it. We got a lot of people without power, up over 700,000 people across the region, including over 250,000 just for Western Washington. And if you look back north of the Hawaiian Islands, we got more to come here, folks. This is already phasing in towards our area. No rest for the weary. So last night, you probably heard all that moderate heavy rainfall ongoing, some impressive segments with some torrential rainfall coming across the region. Look at that one that came across the West Seattle, Burien, Normandy Park, SeaTac, Renton, across I-90. Big westerly surge down the street at Juan de Fuca. And my goodness, what a night it was last night. Extremely stormy. Now we're just dealing with kind of the scattered showers in the wake of the system. That's now ripping across some of the Rocky Mountains, getting off uh, way off east towards Montana. And if you want a nice affordable home weather station to record all this crazy weather we get, it's much more fun to watch the weather with one of these attached to your place of residence and makes a great Christmas gift as well. No moving parts, easy to set up. Click on that link down below to save 10% off. Highly recommend this station. Now, I put this up yesterday and we've got more already on top of this, but you got to have fun with it. Just showing some big numbers and we got a lot more moisture moving into portions of Washington and some of Western Oregon. More on that here in a moment. And you can see the last 10 days, the bullseye has really been on Western Washington. Just an amazing amount of rainfall, probably up over 15 trillion gallons of water in the last 10 days at least. And if you get any damage or anything like that, an impact from the wind, we want your reports, National Weather Service offices. You can find them online or you can call your offices and give them your reports, what kind of damage that you have witnessed. Uh, I-90, it's still open up there, but the power is out currently at the pass. Uh, who knows how long it's going to take before it comes back on. It may already be back on here, but we had some very impressive wind gusts there. Look at Alpental, 112 miles per hour. That's hard to fathom just how powerful that wind is. 56 miles per hour is almost a severe wind gust. And if you take 56 versus 112, a 112 mile per hour gust is four times as strong. Just ridiculous. And some very strong winds for Snoqualmie Pass would be Island. You can see the widespread 60 and 50 plus mile per hour gusts. This is just for Western Washington. Eastern Washington, look at Lewiston, 84. Pullman, an incredible 81 mile per hour gust. Spokane International Airport, 75. Feltsfield, 67. Alder Ridge, 99. Grant County, 60. And portions of Oregon were not spared as well. Look at Pendleton, an amazing 81 mile per hour gust. Some huge gusts across the higher terrain. Click on that one. What is that? Trout Creek, 90 miles per hour. There was some 50 plus gusts out there across the Willamette Valley. Glad to see the National Weather Service put out that wind advisory. Pacific City, 67, some 60s and mid 60s along the coastal areas. What a storm. And this may seem like common sense, but it kills people every single time we have one of these major storms and the powers are out. Use generators outdoors and away from windows. Carbon not monoxide poisoning is a real thing. No charcoal grills or natural gas range or heating as an indoor heating or cooking source. I mean, it gets people every single time. So check on your neighbors. Use flashlights instead of candles. Good stuff like that. So here we go. Next system up. Flood potential. Western Oregon. And the problem here is that we're going to be melting some snow. Snow levels are going to be very high across the region. So a lot of runoff and huge precipitation amounts incoming. More on that here in a moment. But you can see National Weather Service Portland. Good job here. Flood watch is up. Hopefully getting the word out to everybody. Here we go again. Good news, though, coming here. We are not going to reach major flood stage for the Skagit River. So throwing some good news out there. However, White and Green River remain very high. And again, the levees are being tested. We could have more levee failures here over the next few days. Stay prepared for that. And you can see some of these moderate stages here across portions of western Oregon potentially as well. Now, the future is here, folks. The GFS, Artificial Intelligence, day one, it is available on WeatherBell. And it's going to be interesting to see how it compares to the Artificial Intelligence European model. I'll show you a little bit of a difference here as we go through the extended run. But look at the Artificial Intelligence. It's just absolutely hammering Western Oregon, portions of the Southern Washington. These are six-hour chunks I'm going through here, folks, toggling back and forth. Finally, that starts to get out of here as we go through the day on Friday, hopefully. And then the atmospheric river plumes look like they're going to take a further track off to the south and start to impact California a bit more. As a bit of a cooler air mass tries to work in here, 
and maybe it starts to bring some mountain snow and at least, you know, stop bringing rainfall to the upper elevations of our area. And we scroll off into the future a little bit here, trying to look for some differences. And you can kind of see colder air mass in the GFS versus the atmospheric river stuff going on still on artificial intelligence as we go through the end of December. No rest for the weary. What a month. This is going to be a historic one. You're going to remember this one, folks. Now, if you haven't already... Or now, taking a look at the European model. So there goes our next atmospheric river there. And again, you can kind of see the snow levels really rise with the arrival of it, exacerbating flooding conditions. Then we start to get in a bit of a cooler air mass. You see the snow levels drop off a bit here. Precipitation amounts not quite as heavy. Atmospheric river activity, at least for the meantime, probably going into California. But still, some decent rainfall amounts coming across the region as we go on in towards Sunday night. Now, then we scroll off in towards the 22nd, 23rd. You can kind of see some, maybe some lower elevation snowfall trying to get in there. It's very marginal right now. This is, would not be a high impact event. We'll continue to watch it as we're going to get cooler here. But again, I got to pump the brakes on some of the mo social media stuff saying it may snow around Christmas. That's, uh, uh, yeah, that, that's not really a very high confidence thing to be saying right now. So as you can see, there's Christmas afternoon right here, which would mean rain mostly for the lower elevations. But Again, we'll watch it and we'll kind of see how that goes over the next few days. Now, at 950, 925 millibars, about 20, 2,500 feet off the surface, I'm going to put this into motion. And what you need here to get over Western Washington is some of the silver here. You, you need that colder air to get in here. And as it crosses the Pacific Ocean, the Gulf of Alaska, it tends to moderate. And by the time it gets here, you can't get that lower elevation snowfall. You need it to take the track off of Southeast Alaska or Western British Columbia, a short track. You need very cold air. It move back out of the Pacific Ocean. It picks up some moisture and it brings it back in. That's your best chance of getting some lower elevation snowfall. So you can kind of see the track of this cold air coming off the south coast there spending a bit too much time out over the pacific ocean but as we go through this weekend that is better for mountain snow you can kind of see the colder air moving down across washington and oregon we scroll off a bit further into the future and you can see some of that cold air try to move in here a little bit at times as he goes to the 22nd the 23rd maybe teasing some areas with some snowflakes around but again no signal for any kind of major snow event into the lower elevations right now and if we take a look at 850 millibars, 5,000 feet, what I want to show you here is the cooler air mass that's kind of moving across the region in the wake of that windstorm. It doesn't last too long, especially for portions of Western Oregon. Look at that warm air at 5,000 feet flood all the way back up into Washington State, almost up into British Columbia. So yeah, we're going to warm things back up here as we go through the day Thursday. And again, heavy precipitation occurring with that. And then we crash those snow levels back down in the wake of that system. And hopefully for the long term after that. Now looking at snow depth in inches. So something interesting here, you can kind of see how we're building up some of that snow as we go on. This is about Thursday morning right there. And then as we go on into the day Thursday, notice that snowpack get eroded. Again, as I mentioned a couple of times before, that's going to exacerbate the flooding conditions on Thursday. So there's the day one. There's the day two. They've left it at slight risk. Day three starts to move a bit further south, day four and day five back down into California. And again, just consider the entire area under a landslide threat right now. SeaTac well above the right there. So again, uh, Seattle, Tacoma, Everett, you are probably getting to some serious landslide territory right now. And with all that rainfall last night, it could happen at any time. So do be careful for that. Now, total precipitation in inches, we're just going to kind of run through this here pretty quick. You can see, again, I've been talking in depth about that atmospheric river for Western Oregon. We go out in towards uh, the 10-day period or so here, and still a lot of precipitation incoming, but hopefully a lot of this can fall as snowfall. Now, looking at wave action as well, we're pretty good coming down the Strait of Juan de Fuca, still as we go through this morning, kind of dying off as we go on and through the day today. But as we bring this next system in here, watch what's coming for the Oregon coast. You want to get some good wave watching? Go out there on the day Thursday for the Oregon coast. Probably some nice wave watching, maybe shore acres out there also. Do be careful. Don't turn your back on the ocean, however. Six to 10 day. Makes sense. Just kind of clipping us here. The mixed bag across the Pacific Northwest. There's the six to 10 day precipitation. Eight to 14 day. Yeah, they don't show it being too much below normal during that time frame. I was hoping we we're going to get a little bit colder, but there's still some disagreement in the models on just how we're going to go through the end of the month. And there's the 8 to 14 day above normal for much of the West Coast. Experimental product, something similar there as well. Moderate risk for some heavy snow. We'll see how that goes. And some wind also. Check out the Patreon.
Patreon page if you like. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys are all safe out there. Let me know what you guys saw. Let me know what you guys where you guys were. If you have a weather station on your house, what kind of wind speed you got. And yeah, I will catch you guys in the next forecast.